Hi, I'm Ryan Crocor from the Windows Azure Incubation Team, and with me today I've got Wade Wagner uh, from Aditi Technologies. Hi, Wayne. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me. No problem. So, uh, yeah, I'm from uh, Aditi Technologies, I'm the CTO, so I, I get involved in all our technical strategy and a lot of the uh, services that we end up uh, providing to customers. Uh, before I joined Aditi, I used to run technical evangelism for Windows Azure. Yeah. So, cloud Cover Show, right? And I was on the Cloud Cover Show Excellent with, with show. Steve Marks. Yeah, yeah thanks. Great show. Still is a great show. Still is a great show, yeah. yeah good, good stuff. So for everyone who, who, who's interested in Windows Azure, I'd encourage you to check out the Channel 9 Cloud Cover Show. Some really good stuff bi-weekly, so it's pretty yep. good. Yeah. So now that you're not running evangelism anymore, what are you doing at Aditi? So, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, share a couple of things about Aditi. So we, we actually are a Microsoft uh, practice, so we do focus on Microsoft technologies and taken an early bet on Windows Azure. So actually for the last three years, we've been uh, the Windows Azure uh, Partner of the Year or Runner Up. And uh, so we've, we've built out a very strong practice around Windows Azure. Um, so we've, we've made a big bet on, uh, on platform as a service yeah. as a concept. And um, this is, I mean, it's one of the reasons why we're as excited about Windows Azure as we are. We've focused so much on it and uh, yeah, continue to, continue to do projects on it. That's excellent. So Windows Azure, you know, it, it constantly in a, in, a, in a quick release cycle releases new features all the time. So what, what's new to the platform that really excites you? So uh, th this summer had a lot of uh, big releases, everything from infrastructure as a service to the Windows Azure website capability, yeah. uh, and even more recently, I think in the last two weeks, uh, mobile services. Yeah. And so all of these things actually are, are pieces of the platform that we're looking to use. I think when you, when you look at Windows Azure, there's like three different pillars. There's an openness to it, a flexibility, and then just it's solid. And yeah. I talked about this this morning at the, at the talk. And all these pieces add a, a degree of flexibility that make it more attractive for enterprises. Um, it provides some more higher level services that ISVs as well as startups can start to tap into. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're just excited to start to leverage all these capabilities for our customer solutions. Yeah, you know, down here in New Zealand and, 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 and Australia and this part of the world, we see massive uptake from, from ISVs and startups and, you know, web application companies and mobile game developers, you know, all running on Windows Azure. But the question that we always get asked is what's the value proposition for an enterprise yeah. running in Windows Azure? I think uh, it's a good question. Um, most of the projects that Aditi has done, I'd say over the last three to four years with Windows Azure, has been for an ISV. Um, but what we're starting to find is that given the releases from this summer with infrastructure as a service support, really having durable virtual machines that yeah. also have portability between the on-premises environment, the cloud, and even third-party providers. So having that VHD format where you can build your application, have it run, and then, and then be able to port it to other platforms is a huge opportunity. It means that you're not locked into a particular vendor. You're not locked into a platform. You know, you have a lot of flexibility of where and when to run. So you can build your application and, and, and then decide where you want to run it. Absolutely. I think the, the other piece is a lot of enterprises aren't ready to move uh, significant parts of their infrastructure to the cloud, and they've made such investments in hardware that they don't want to just get rid of it. So having the ability to leverage the cloud where it's appropriate but yet still be able to connect back to services on premises is key. And so uh, the virtual private network capability to have that low level IPsec connection to your cloud and actually have your cloud assets sit on the same subnet as your local, um, local apps is a, is a huge capability. Yeah, that's and a huge, pretty powerful. Yeah, so, so those two things I think really open it up for the enterprise. Um, the other thing that Windows Azure has done really well recently is being a little bit more open about certification processes, standards, to provide some comfort to an enterprise that when they go to run something up in the cloud, their data is going to be protected, that there's, there's reasonable SLAs in place. And so all of these things together, I think, make the enterprise a lot more comfortable yeah. about. Because we've, just, we've just recently announced HIPAA certification, and there's a bunch of other ones coming, right? Yep. So that's yeah. good. The other, the other thing is I think um, Microsoft's been very uh, specific about what type of workloads they're looking to support. And yeah. I think coming out and saying, yes, SharePoint will be a first class citizen and running in Windows Azure within virtual machines. And yes, Active Directory and SQL Server and BizTalk. I think those do a lot to make enterprises feel better about making a commitment to Absolutely. Windows Azure. Yeah. So, Well, great. It's been really, really good to have a chat. And yeah. um, I hope you enjoy New Zealand. Thanks, I am. And um, hope to get you back sometime soon. Yep, yeah, I'm happy to. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank <laughs> you.